The human menstrual cycle. This is really a story of chemical communication between your pituitary gland, which is located just below your brain, and other parts of your body. The first signal is sent from your pituitary gland to your follicle or a follicle, which obviously is in the ovaries. This signal is a chemical called FSH, which stands for follicle stimulating hormone. Yep, you guessed it. This stimulates the follicle to start to develop. Now, at some point, your follicle has got to say, whoa, 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 I've got enough stimulation. So it sends a message back to the brain. Now, this message is a chemical called estrogen. This is negative feedback. So I have drawn the arrow in red. There is also a positive role of estrogen. It triggers the next development in the menstrual cycle. This is where your uterus starts to develop thickened walls in preparation for possible implantation of a follicle should it get impregnated, or should we say in biological terms, should it be fertilized. So our first signal was FSH to stimulate the follicle to develop, and our second signal was estrogen, which has two roles, the negative feedback role of saying to the brain, enough, and the positive role of telling the uterus walls to start to thicken in preparation. Eventually, enough estrogen gets to the pituitary gland, triggering the release of luteinizing hormone. Now, luteinizing hormone is a message back to our follicle. It causes the follicle to release the egg and become a corpus luteum, which is like a scar where the egg used to be held. Luteinizing hormone causes the follicle to release a hormone called progesterone. Now, progesterone maintains the thickenings of the uterus wall in preparation for a fertilized egg to be able to implant. So luteinizing hormone is our third hormone and progesterone is our fourth hormone. Progesterone also has a second function which is to tell the pituitary gland not to release any more FSH or luteinizing hormone. Another negative feedback step. So the whole thing has been about chemical communication, a message and a counter message all the time so that we have FSH created, estrogen to say stop and thicken the walls, LH to say release the egg and then progesterone to maintain the thickened uterus wall and to stop the pituitary gland secreting more of our starting hormones. If our egg is fertilized and implanted on our uterus wall it will keep releasing progesterone, which keeps maintaining our thickened uterus wall, allowing a pregnancy to develop. However, if our egg is released, not fertilized, does not implant, it ends up being flushed out. There is no more progesterone being produced to maintain the thickened uterus walls. These start to break down and menstruation begins. This can also be explained in terms of the chemical messages themselves. We can also talk about this in terms of chemicals talking to each other, the hormones talking to each other. The first hormone involved was FSH. Now when the levels of FSH get high enough, they trigger the second hormone to be released, which was estrogen. The levels are coming up over time. I'm using two colored line here because estrogen has both a positive and a negative feedback role. Once the estrogen levels get high enough, they trigger our next hormone to be released, which is luteinizing hormone. Now this comes up in a very sudden spike and back down rather quickly. So it can be used as an indicator when we're looking into the health of a woman has she released her egg yet? This triggers an increased concentration of our next hormone, progesterone. When the concentration of LH reaches a certain level, it causes progesterone to be released at a much higher 
level. We've got our progesterone, suddenly it's coming up. Progesterone has a positive and a negative feedback role, so both colours to here. Now we've got two options here. If the egg is fertilised, implanted, and the woman is pregnant, the developing fetus continues to release progesterone. On the other hand, if there's no implantation and no pregnancy, we get a drop now in the level of progesterone. Once the progesterone levels drop to a certain point, that triggers the start of menstruation. The first day of menstruation is generally regarded as day zero because it's one of the few times we can easily identify. Now day zero here is actually the same as day zero here that started our whole cycle. So what we see is over and over the cycle is repeated until we get to this point here where we have a pregnancy. We have a fertilized implantation. We maintain a high level of progesterone. The shape of these curves is not exact. You really need to go to a textbook to get that right. But the idea that each hormone triggers the next one is the idea I'm trying to convey here.